in July last year, you wrote in the Daily Telegraph and in, in your uh, op-ed that Biden must get NATO ready for imminent war despite Russian failure in Ukraine. The clock is ticking and time is not in favor of the transatlantic alliance. Do you think that Russia has made a decision to, to expand the war further is one question. And do you think that we're ready for an imminent war more than when you wrote the article, which was roughly a, a year ago? So thank you uh, for bringing that up. Um, we have moved way too slow on energizing, re-energizing our industrial base. Now, we, the West has enormous potential uh, industrial capacity. If you add together the economies of all the EU plus US, UK, Canada, it dwarfs whatever Russia has. But we still somehow have not um, mustered the political will required to create those resources that would be needed for um, effective deterrence or effective defense. So we, I'm still very concerned there. I do believe that the Alliance has done much, uh, has done very well on improving command structures on uh, now that we have war plans that are uh, approved by the North Atlantic Council. These are the kind of things that needed to be done to improve readiness in the Alliance. Uh, we still do not have enough air and missile defense. And clearly the Russians, if they've made the terrible decision to attack a NATO country, Uh, then they will have also already made the terrible decision to launch missiles against civilian infrastructure. And, and I worry that we do not have enough based on what we see happening in Ukraine on a daily basis. We also still do not have um, uh, the ability to move as fast as we need to before the crisis in order to prevent the crisis, what we refer to as military mobility. This is still a challenge. Then finally, our, our societies are still in disbelief. I mean, the further west you go, people are like, why, this is, why, why, would, we, why would Russia attack? <laughs> just, just like people were saying, why would Russia attack Ukraine? It makes no sense. So you can't think like an American or a German or a Brit. You have to think like a Russian you know, and, and, and then ask that question. So getting our societies ready Uh, having the resilience uh, to not be vulnerable to disinformation, for example, for our infrastructure to be protected from cyber attacks, which absolutely will be part of any sort of um, Russian effort. Uh, disinformation to create labor unrest so that host nation support is not um, as reliable to, to do all the things necessary. Uh, these are the thing. These are the areas where I know your president worked very hard when he was at NATO, and he's still working hard to to improve inside the Czech Republic. But this is this is true across uh, across all of, all of our countries, and uh, I think the decision for Russia will be based on if Ukraine fails, and the only reason Ukraine fails is if the West does not help them win. That's the only reason Ukraine will fail is because we fail. And if we fail there, then I think Russia will feel emboldened that like, okay, the West still doesn't get it. And uh, and then I think um, after, I don't know, two, three years, um, Russia will be ready to to go again. And uh, and they, they talk about it openly. I mean, this is not like a, a secret. They talk openly about it. And, uh, you know, Rom Romania has said they will not... Romania has indicated that they will help protect Moldova. I'm sure that Poland will not just sit there behind their border uh, and watch Ukraine, Russian forces just keep moving across Ukraine. So uh, if we want to avoid a situation where Russia actually gets into a war with NATO, we help Ukraine defeat Russia in Ukraine. That's the best way to make sure that Czech soldiers are not in a conflict as part of NATO with Russia is by defeating Russia in Ukraine.